Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Witching Hour. It is a very special Halloween edition of the show brought to you by FX's original comedy, What We Do in the Shadows. I'm Perry. This is Haley. And we have so much fun stuff planned right now in celebration of spooky season. That we do. We are showing off costumes. We are talking to Diana Bang from Why the Last Man. We're carving pumpkins. And we're talking about our favorite vampire movies and TV shows, which, of course, includes What We Do in the Shadows. Yep, and just in case you are not familiar with What We Do in the Shadows, which you should be, the FX original comedy, What We Do in the Shadows, documents the the daily or nightly lives of four vampire roommates who have lived together for hundreds of years. All episodes of season three are now streaming on FX on Hulu, as well as previous seasons. All right, let's get into it. How are you doing? I feel like I haven't I haven't seen you in this setting I in know. a while. I've never seen you in this setting before. I guess so. You know what I mean. I know what you mean. in person and and dressed for, I'm schwitzing so much. You you look adorable. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. I I felt like Sam was an appropriate costume to wear today because of how much I love trick or treat. Always. Always. And if we weren't in California, that'd be cozy as heck and seasonally appropriate. Should have thought about that, but I didn't. Um... You're talking to a person with a neck up to here right now. All right, that's fair. We're always on the same page, aren't we? Um, We have to, like, catch up, too. So spooky season has been going on for a while. I think it technically starts at the beginning of September. I'm like a mid-September. Okay. But yeah, we're on. All right. I feel like that's a little more reasonable than me, but I go hard with everything. And, like, the first thing I had to do, I feel like you know what it is. Is it it coming up with a costume for your little bunny? He dresses up. In a, so I have a cat named Dewey, and he dresses up. He's a good sport about it. He hates costumes, but he usually does at least let me snap a couple of pictures. And I feel like maybe we'll, like, show a picture when I say what it is. But this year, little Deputy Dewey is a shark. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with it yet. But I feel like he's either the shark from Jaws or something pertaining to King Shark. Oh. Just because The Suicide Squad is one of my favorite movies of the year. But... Mm-hmm. Like, I can't mm-hmm. quite figure out how to Photoshop him into something from the Suicide Squad at the moment. Ooh, now that's going to be a challenge I'm going to think about until we figure please, this out. Please do, and please let me know when you have an idea, because I'm not creative enough for this right now. I can't wait to see, though. Those pictures are always a highlight, a seasonal highlight. <laughs> He's just something else. <laughs> what about Halloween candy? What have you been eating? Candy corn? Mm. Candy corn? I There's do. candy corn fans in this room, right? Yeah. All right. I I do go in. I, I go in for candy corn, but honestly, like, uh, Reese's always knock me out in Halloween. It's That's the one that gets me. If I had to pick the number one Halloween candy, it would definitely be, like, specifically a Reese's peanut butter cup. Like, none of that Reese's piece is nonsense, but <laughs> I think my second favorite is is probably candy corn. Like, I can eat a stupid amount of candy corn. I love it. I don't get the hate, but I, I have come to terms with the fact that I'm also a person who likes pineapple on pizza, and I might just have bad food opinions. And I'm okay with it. I but love, it's your food opinion, so that makes it not bad. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> Everything I say is right. I've also gotten in the habit of burning candy corn candles all the time. Cool. Like, I don't like any other scented candle <laughs> except for candy corn. Does it actually smell like what does candy corn smell like i I mean it it smells like like, it smells like artificial candy corn just like Mm -hmm. every candle does but i quite enjoy it well that's fun (laughs) that's seasonal you know i love a seasonal candle yeah yeah so so i am i'm sam without the mask because we wouldn't dare ruin these bangs um (laughs) (laughs) i'm glad you enjoyed that what 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 inspired what, what we see today. What is this? Yes. You're asking me. <laughs> Basically, I was saying that, but in a nicer way. What the heck is happening here? Um, <clears throat> this is one portion of a costume that is meant to be Nadja from what we do in the shadows because I love it. And me and my boyfriend are going to be Nadja and Laszlo. But um, that didn't happen. I had, I had several conflicts that didn't come together. The fangs I got were too small for my teeth. And I have small teeth. Uh, the dress was too large and the wigs are in storage they are not available so instead i'm a uh, just a halloween spirit witch well this means everybody out there is gonna have to check your social media at a point to see the finished product that's right because it's gonna look incredible exceptional i believe i believe i have all (laughs) the faith in the world thankfully we do have uh, a couple people in studio today who have full costumes 
like. Oh hey. Oh hey. My movie club co-host Koi. I didn't traumatize you with our Halloween episode, right? I mean, I'm or did I? Aware I I did. now <laughs> of my fear in a way that I wasn't before. I thought it might be a childhood fear, but you taught me it was an adulthood fear as well. Spooky movies are scary, guys. They're for some people, like mayonnaise. They're not for everybody. And like mayonnaise, they are very nutritious in one way and horrific in others. And frankly, I have no further places to go with this mayonnaise metaphor except that it's messy, like spooky movies. I think I have follow-ups. Let's talk more about mayonnaise. (laughs) It goes on some sandwiches. It goes on some genres. It goes with some things. It doesn't go with others. It is a genre bender. But always a bit slimy. It is always slimy. I'll give yeah. you that. So I, I struggle with horror movies. This is like <laughs> such a coy way of thinking through things, and I'm all for it. Oh, and now I'm like, I'm digging myself a mayonnaise filled hole. I'm oh, trying no. not to get actively upset that you just compared horror movies to mayonnaise and just I go with it. Intentional. I feel like we're also making a lot of people out there nauseous because don't people like really hate mayonnaise? <laughs> We're nailing it. We're doing pineapple on pizza, candy corn, and mayonnaise. Let's <laughs> see what else we can get. Don't a lot of people really love mayonnaise? That's like, true. Like, there are zealots for mayonnaise. Like I guess there are so. Conventions. I feel like... Also, the, my new band name, this Zealots is, for Mayonnaise. <laughs> this is a show for horror things, so people shouldn't be expecting good advice in those categories from us. Yeah, Evergreen. All right, Koi, tell us what you're wearing. Who are your I, dresses right uh, now? You know, I'm wearing uh, Vera Wang, and <laughs> frankly, no, I'm uh, I'm Peter B. Parker because uh, the quarantine was not friendly to my uh, other superhero physiques, and I love that I can be myself while also being <laughs> Spider-Man, thanks to Peter B. Parker. Uh, my favorite thing was I remembered to bring uh, one different shoe, so uh. I actually do have the found converse of Peter B. Parker um, the matching shot socks was just me not not being a good adult. Uh, but Peter B. Parker, ready for action. Yes. Look at that attention <laughs> to detail. The guts it's custom. too perfect. It's from Oreos and beer and happiness. Oh, so my. Like what a coy tagline for you. All right. Thank mm-hmm. you for showing off your costume. I think we have someone Enjoy else here. Mayonnaise. Someone else with a with a very cool costume. I mean, I don't want to play favorites, but this one it's might be at one. least from a favorite movie. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Darina. Hola, hola. How you doing? Good. Hungry for boys. You got any? <laughs> <laughs> so tell everybody who you are right yes, now. Yes, I am Jennifer Check from Jennifer's Body. Uh, the obviously the uh, legendary Megan Fox. I got her uh, high school costume as well as a little bit of blood here because you know I'm uh, eating boys now. But I used to eat boys because you know that Hell used to be a teenage girl, mm-hmm. but now Hell mm-hmm. is actually a middle-aged woman who's Mexican and eats uh, <laughs> corporate politicians. So, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, That's stunning excellent. work. That movie does not get nearly enough. Oh my also, God! Oh, this. you brought the. You guys got to zoom in. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I got my little Jennifer's body lighter. Where did you get that? On the Etsy. Oh really? Yeah. I guess you could probably find anything. Oh, well, don't do that. Oh, makes me nervous. I was half expecting like you to have prepped your tongue with some flammable something. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What if I just lit the studio on fire? Please yeah. don't do that. No, let's not do that. But you, you nailed it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a good movie. It's underrated. Not a lot of people know it. Highly recommend watching it. Karen Kusama. Yes. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Makes one good movie after the next, and like two great performances yes. from uh, Megan Fox and Amanda Seyfried. Exactly. Even and Kyle Gallner. We yes. love Kyle Colin. Gallner on this show. Colin Supremacy. Yes. Also, Kyle Adam Gallner is pretty good as a douchebag. <laughs> so, <laughs> really good. <gasps> All right, I think uh, I think you nailed it. You're fully in character. We love you, and we're gonna see you in a little bit. Yes, yes. <laughs> Goodbye, Darina, and hello What's to up? the broiest person I know. And I feel like it, I could say that because you're really What's you're up, really bro? leaning you're into it right How's now. It Hi, Matt. Hi, <laughs> Matt. Dude, bro, party massacre, Matt. Yes, not of course you are. Matt here. These are both mine. Mm-hmm. These aren't yours. Perfect. I'm not sharing. No, no, no. It's a dude bro donato. I respect the rules. Don't not to bomb party massacre. Three. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Wait. Green so I, I have Green a feeling a lot of people out there might not know what your outfit pertains uh, to right now. Fair. So that's just fair. just in case that's if the you case, don't, which please, I don't know please why tell them what dude bro party massacre is. So dude, dude, bro, dude bro party massacre two. No. Three. three. Even though the first two don't exist. Uh, Dude, As Party though Massacre, you haven't told me that a million times. <laughs> Dude, Party Massacre 3 is one of the funniest, I, I think it's one of the best satires on nostalgia right now that we have. And I... 
talk into the mic, oh, my friend. <laughs> Duper Party Massacre 3 is one of the best nostalgia commentaries we have right now. It's a great satire, it's a great spoof, but what it does best is still bring the slasher into the modern genre somehow through all the dude broiness and through all of the beer bongs and kills and things of that nature. Like, it is just straight bros being bros the whole movie, but it's in place of a sorority house massacre. So, like, it's it's really smart, and I know I'm saying that about a movie <laughs> called Duper Party Massacre 3, but, like... Three, yes. I, and the first two don't exist, in case you uh, don't go looking for the one and two. They <laughs> don't exist at all. This is a fake movie. Oh, man. It is so good. I have a question. Yes. Does your quarantine hair make you an even right. more, Ooh. like, an even better is... Dude Bro Massacre Party 3 it costume? Had, it had volume before I got here, and it took oh. me so long to get here that all my volume went away. That heat again. I, the California heat. Kill heat. Me. But, so, I, I guess it does. It, it, it goes more into the uh, long-haired bro vibe of the okay. 80s. That right, was a thing, it. for sure. In any case, I'm not playing Flannel Bro, I'm not playing Turtleneck Bro, because those are real characters in the movie. Oh, no. I am just Random Bro number three. Okay. Donato Bro. Donato Bro. Donato Bro. Donato Bro. Mm -hmm. I'm all for this. This is what I've done. <laughs> this is what you brought me on to do. So yes. guess what I'm doing. You are exactly right. Donato. I'm not going to let this. I'm going to be thinking about this for the rest of the show. Yes, I will be as well. <laughs> all right. I think we have one more person, right? I think like, we do. So, like someone else is here. I don't know who this is, though. Someone? Who we someone? Got? You know, I what? love Halloween, and I thought, oh. in loving Halloween, one can't just wear one costume, because that would be short-sighted. Mm -hmm. So instead, you bring the most wholesome superhero, and also represent the most wholesome show on television with a custom jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, my birthday is September 15th. I weighed 5 pounds, 15 ounces, and was born at 5.15 p.m. Oh, so 15 is my lucky number. And uh, I don't know what that means in soccer, because I don't sports. <laughs> but that is certainly my position. So uh, John Drove 15, Ted Lasso jersey. Ted Lasso, Fantastic. love. I also where where do you even get that? Uh, you know, they, they custom make them. The, the girl I'm seeing got it for me for my birthday. And so that was on the 15th. So she, uh, she ordered it. Excellent. So like now I'm now I'm on I'm on AFC Richmond. I did it. All right. I made the team. I like that you went from like I'm fully quarantined up. I'm just a normal I'm a normal Spider Man to I'm an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a professional athlete. In the last twelve minutes, I did a lot of cardio. <laughs> Everything has changed. Beer remains. You're, that works you're for wearing both. them both. I feel like Peter Parker would appreciate a nice, and so would Ted Lasso, like sports fan. So I that's, appreciate. That's true. It's like continuity. <laughs> very, very impressed with a quick costume change. All right, so that's it for our costume segment. You know where we have to go next. You can stay here for this I announcement. I was told to leave before. So we got a lot, we got a lot to get to right now mm -hmm. because it's, it's Halloween, and you need to cram in as many horror movies as humanly possible. But more specifically, Fact. we want to lean into the vampire of it all right now, and we have so much good content that you need to check out. And... Haley and I were going to save our recommendations for last, but we have someone That's returning fun. to the show who's got a very good one for you. I can confirm. I know what he picked. Welcome back to the show, Koi. So excited. What you got for us? What is, what is your must-watch vampire movie of choice for this Halloween season? Blind Boys Don't Lie. Mm -hmm. Cry Little Sister. Sack Solo. The Lost Boys is not just the vampire movie. It's the 80s movie. If you like happiness, you like The Lost Boys. This movie is pure, jubilant, jolly, jovial joy. This movie is just so much, and it captures the uh, sardonic cheese of a classic horror film while mixing in pop culture references, which are now almost not dated because we're bringing them back. Like, we're so into the 80s culture, they're not, like, dated references. They're like, oh, yeah, of course. And it does all of this while influencing, I would argue, Buffy, most modern, uh, slightly slapstick, cheesy horror films in general, and gives us Jason Patrick, Kiefer Sutherland, and the Corys. This movie is cinema. I can watch it daily. I watch it far too often. I'm not a horror guy, but this movie is, it's like calling, uh, I don't know, Godfather a mafia movie. It is cinema. Yes, The Lost Boys is the godfather of vampire movies. Maybe better. 
Koi, what town does it take place in? It takes place in Santa Carla. I know. Which I is know that now. perhaps not Santa Clara, but close. I said Santa Cruz. Not Santa Cruz, which is real, but where it was filmed. Where I went to school. Yes. Santa Cruz? <laughs> That's yeah. why I said it, I is swear. Is it the murder capital of the world? No. Okay. It's actually quite lovely. It's, 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 a, it's in the movie. I see I've been mistaught. Yeah, no. Grandpa misled me. Also, the grandpa in that film, I would argue, is one of the greatest of any character actor moments. Like, the way this film wraps up, the way the grandpa navigates everything, like, I just, I, we, we should do an hour on The Lost Boys. I'm taking over the show. I'm sorry to everything else. It's The Lost Boys. That's what Movie Club is for. <sighs> Can we do an entirely Lost Boys episode? I'd be down for it. I, let's talk about The Lost Boys. Yeah. All right. You, I, I'll, I'll be back. I feel like I don't know it nearly as well as you do, <laughs> but I do love it and I watch it every once in a while. It's also amazing to run to. The soundtrack is incredible because you'll be listening That's to like these point. crazy rock ballads and there'll just be like so much sexy, sexy sax. <laughs> so much. Oh, God. <laughs> it is sexual. Get on it. Get on the Lost Boys. All right. Thank you for that one, Koi. I just the of my time. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Darina coming back. Yay. With her own pick for a must-watch vampire movie this season. Oh, hi. Hello there. This is my favorite sandwich I've ever been in the middle of. I get it. I get it. <laughs> All right, ladies. So we're going to talk about the best vampire movie ever made. As uh, I agree with Koi that Lost, Lost Boys is amazing. However, in 1992, I was 10 years old when I saw this movie, which is, by the way, Academy Award-winning movie with one of the best, most towering, terrifying performances as Dracula by Gary Oldman, and that is Bram Stoker's Dracula, which also, I know, not everybody loves it. However, Keanu Reeves' British accent, I think, should have also won an Oscar because it is hilarious. And so this movie has it all. It has amazing costume design and amazing makeup and amazing cinematography uh, by the great Michael Bajo. Bauhaus, I believe, who uh, worked with Cor Scorsese. It's got it all. And also Winona Ryder as Mina Harker, obviously, and Keanu Reeves as Jonathan Harker doing a British accent. Badly, terribly. <laughs> but it's so funny. So when you're terrified as a kid watching this movie, you're also laughing at the same time. I think it's wonderful. I think that was a wonderful pitch. <laughs> I, I agree. And you know what? When you really love something, I think you see the good and the bad as both beautiful. Exactly. And you clearly love this movie. Truly. Which I do too. I mean, look, it also has an amazing score. Well, uh, Wosha Kilar, I, I still can't say his name, but it's one of the coolest theme songs ever from like a horror movie. And you know your scores. I do. I really do. Perry knows. We've had Perry long conversations about that. Time. Yes, that's the only time I get invited to Colliders <laughs> to talk about scores, which I'm happy to do. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but um, yeah, I think it's freaking great. And I think everybody should watch it. And even if you think it's cheesy and yes, the romance gets a little bit, you know, it's not for me as much. It still looks amazing. It's a visually stunning movie. Like they don't make movies like that anymore. Shout out mm. to Francis Ford Coppola. Also, I forgot to mention Annie Lennox sings the end credit song, so you can't lose there. There's a whole lot of pluses there. So many. That's a lot to love, and I like that you brought up the Keanu Reeves accent, because maybe you're not the biggest vampire person, maybe you're just dipping your toes in, but like if you love Keanu Reeves, that's something to see, and it might bring you to Bram Stoker's Dracula, and everybody should eventually be brought to Bram Stoker's Dracula. Agreed. Mm -hmm. I know where the bastard sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. All right, we have one more. All right. And yet again, Mr. Matt Donato is doing Hello. something very on brand with his pick. Knocking over things <laughs> as I come over here. So, do I dare ask what you have for us today? What All you right. got? So you've heard classics mm -hmm. so far. Uh, what I'm going to bring you is streaming on Amazon Prime, so I want to say that right now. You can stream it. It's a little lesser-known vampire flick. It is also a rock musical, so I'm throwing a vampire rock musical your way. It is called Suck. It played TIFF. It played South by Southwest in the late 2000s, and from there... Uh, do you guys know what suck is? Uh, I can do I ask? not. I do not. I have. I only know it because you bring it up every once in a while. As you can see, it's under scene. So suck is a lesser known vampire rock uh, comedy. It is written, directed, and partly composed by Rob Stefaniak, and he does so much to bring the road element of a band called Wait for It, the Winners. They are not the winners when the movie starts out. So it is a lesser known band. They get on the road. They meet Alice Cooper, who is a bartender who might also be the devil. Moby plays a metalhead who throws meat at crowds. And then they meet someone who's a vampire. And the vampire gives some of them powers. 
And slowly, one by one, they start turning into vampires, and they become ex super famous as vampires. So the moral conundrum becomes, do I accept fame for selling my soul, or do I stay human and not really that important? The Who most straightforward metaphor. Yeah. Who hasn't debated that? I was going to say, what's your answer to that? Uh, a vampire in a minute. Yeah. Like, not yeah. even, no hesitation. I yeah. think I'd have that same problem. If I can be famous, <laughs> if I can be a rock star, and also be, like, immortal and super vampire sexy, yeah. I think that's very fair. I don't judge you for that choice whatsoever. <laughs> I feel like, for me, it would be, like, being famous would be the thing you had to accept to be a vampire <laughs> instead of reverse. <laughs> All right, that's fair. Oh, I have to be famous, but I get to be a vampire? Okay, fine. What if I tell you you're hunted by Malcolm McDowell, whose name is Eddie Van Helsing in the movie? In, yeah, obviously. Exactly, right. Even so then you're in. definitely a vampire. I don't think that changes anything. Yeah. <laughs> All the jokes are on the nose. It is not doing anything. It's like trying to be highbrow or anything of that nature. It's just really fun. And the music is kind of catchy. So like the last thing I'll say is I'm a sucker for any movie that tells a story through a its sucker lyrics. sucker for suck. So <laughs> I'm a sucker for suck. Yes. <laughs> All right. That's, I'm going to leave landing. on that. Put yes. that on the DVD box. <laughs> yeah, retroactively, a decade later. <laughs> so we have some, some stuff of our own to cover. Yeah, we I know. Do. You got a big one. Oh, yeah. You mean like one of the best shows ever made of all time ever in the history of television? I will agree with that. I don't know it as well. Like, I haven't rewatched this show nearly as much as I think you have, but I'm still very much behind the statement you just made. Inspired by the Lost Boys. <laughs> Fair enough. You can, t we can go down that road a million years. It's Come inspired. It's any day. It's inspired by a lot of things. Uh, it is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It is the formative. I wouldn't even say television show. Like piece of entertainment of my youth. Every week tuned in when I was a kid just like had to see the next episode and um, aside from why I love it because it does get quite expansive in mythology it's not just vampires it goes everywhere but really mm -hmm. um, inspired by Lost Boys let's say in, <laughs> in its irreverent approach to <laughs> vampirism and uh, power and just one of the most clever things I, I think ever put on the air it it even if oh I'm getting so deep in the weeds in my mind but like <laughs> when it comes to the vampires because things start out semi simple in the moralism but you've got Angel who's like the good broody vampire but once the show goes on it, it's a seven season show and it just really evolves that sense of morality Spike fans know <laughs> uh, it is the best show ever, and I love it, and you should watch it. And yeah, watch it for vampires, but just watch it because it's the best ever. The person next to me on the plane on the way back to LA recently was watching it, and I was doing that like creeper thing where I'm looking at her laptop, and I couldn't <laughs> stop because so that show, it sucks you in. What, what's the, the silent one? That was always Hush. my favorite. So Hush, Hush is the only episode that I've watched like over and over and over. Phenomenal, no speaking yeah. for most of the episode. Uh, not vampire centric episode, but one of the best. And that's Horrifying. what I mean by like the, the mythology just expands so yeah. much. Horrifying in the best possible way. I genuinely scary. That. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. All right, I have something that is not genuinely scary. So we really can't do this show without highlighting, of course, what we do in the shadows, the show, which like from the bottom of my heart, like I adore that show. It is excellent. And it has been inspired by an excellent movie. Yes. What we do in The Shadows, the film, is fantastic. And yes, I know it's not shaky camera found footage, but in general, I always love when the cinematography can do something different to add to the story and the mockumentary approach to telling the story of, of a bunch of vampires who live together is just genius. The way that they play into it, the comedy, like the way the whole thing is shot, I really do think amplifies all that so, so well. And it, you know, it basically gave us something that we've never seen before. Because how many times, like whether we're talking about I don't know, like vampires or zombies or just like name your really popular cinematic supernatural creature. How many times have we had the conversation where it's like, this has been done to death. I am sick of it. Don't do it anymore. This is an example of a movie that takes something that you have seen a lot of on the big screen and does something very different with it. And it does it very well. Yes, it does. And it's like, you kind of pulled my head in an interesting direction when you were saying them because when this film came out like vampires weren't the thing anymore they were in a mm -hmm. vampires go in cycles of popularity and it was on a downtrend 
And this just totally broke through regardless of the public sentiment. And a lot of that obviously is due to like Taika Waititi and Jermaine Clement's uh, incredibly sharp writing and performance skills and generally their sense of humor, which uh, when you say it's not the scariest, like, no, it's not. It's a, it's a comedy, yeah. but it is quite something in the way they approach the, the effects when it does get a bit it's bloody. True. They hit a really unique balance in their writing between this isn't quite scary, but oh man, that got a little real for a minute. Yep. All right. Speaking of not so scary, but like kind of scary, this was scary for me as a kid a little bit. We've got one more that we want to throw out there, and it isn't necessarily a straightforward uh, vampire film, but it's, it's one of the most important Halloween viewing essentials out there. You cannot have a Halloween without incorporating this movie at some point. And it's Hocus Pocus. Of course. I watched that movie more times than I can count as a kid. And I still, to this day, can quote it over and over. I watch it every Halloween season. I adore it. I adore Doug Jones in it. Yes. We don't talk about how good Doug Jones is in that movie and everything he's in for that matter. Yes. But I can still quote this whole thing. I adore the Sanderson sisters. I know that I would be the jerk to light the black flame candle <laughs> and I'm totally okay with that. It's it's essential. This movie is so a part of my life, I can't even describe it. I echo everything you just said. Clearly I'm here for witch culture. Yes, yes. Uh, but, you know, there is that vampire thread. The dad does oh, yes. dress as a vampire at the party, and he rocks it. They are having a good time. Uh, he is loving being a vampire for that night. Maybe loving it too much. Who could say? <laughs> but I, I, I fully adore Hocus Pocus, and I've had a lot of fun showing it to weirdly people who hadn't seen it that does happen like adults yes oh wow uh and they're just forever charmed it's a forever charming film i can't wait until my niece is yes. like i don't know I, like i'm a bad judge of what's appropriate for a child to watch so nobody listened to me on this but the main reason why i don't show it to her right now is because she just doesn't have the attention span to watch a full feature and well, how old is she? she's two. Oh, that's yeah she's not gonna know yeah she's she's busy watching all the cartoons right Give now. Me like three years <laughs> i know maybe, i know she'll be obsessed. i'm impatient i want to oh, share yeah. everything i love <laughs> I with mean, her you can show it now she just won't remember it <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the thing i'll be patient and i'll wait but to everybody out there hocus pocus is an absolute must watch this season. You have to check it out. Hey, thanks for having me. So excited to have you and so excited that you dressed for the show. No, I heard it was a party. So I was like, okay, not to Allison Mann. Gotta, gotta dress up as the mad scientist slash Bill Nye. I don't know. <laughs> it is too perfect. Let's talk a little bit about Spooky Season. Are you a big fan in general? Do you usually go big with Halloween plans and costumes and everything? It depends on the year. It depends on I'm fairly lazy. So when it comes to costume planning, it's sort of a last minute kind of thing. I think my, my go-to is um, <laughs> finding what color of clothing do I have a lot of? Okay, do I have any wigs? that are the same color. And then I'll like, um, so let's just say I have a blue wig, blue clothes. I'll go, I'll be like, okay, go online, print out like a Windex product, like Windex label. And I'll just like paste it on myself. So I do that every year. I'm like, okay, I got a lot of red. Okay. I'm going to be ketchup this year. And then other years it's like mustard. Oh, I'm going to be silver or nickel or yeah. I don't know. I was going to ask, did you already have this style and tie? This is mine. I went through this like love of Diane Keaton phase when I was younger and, you know, just tried to dress like her, but couldn't pull it off. So this is from way back. And so, yeah, I pulled it out. <laughs> Perfect. Very good thing to have on hand. Uh, what are what are the big Halloween plans this year? Anything in particular for day of? I mean... Not yet. I'm hoping that I can um, go visit a friend with kids and, you know, probably tag along when they go trick-or-treating. Uh, if they go trick-or-treating, or if not, then just hang out and uh, hopefully give out candy or, you know. What about you two? Do you have any cool plans? <laughs> That's that's a very good question. We were trying to cook up a little something the other day, but... 
a top priority for me before the holiday actually hits is to visit another one of the many Los Angeles haunts. I love haunted houses and being scared. So get me in one of those again, and I'm going to be a happy person. Are they open? Oh, they are open. They are up and running, and they are quite wonderful. Oh, okay. That's exciting. I, I don't know if we have any haunted houses. I'm in Vancouver right now, so maybe. Usually they have this sort of, this like, um, uh, this, like where they have the fair, they have these haunted, like, you know, places you can go in and get scared. They freak me out too much. I went, I went one year and I was like, okay, I, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> so good follow life. up to that then. What about horror movies in general? Do they freak you out too much or are you into them? They do freak me out. So when I remember when I was little, I watched, um, you know, like some of the Friday the 13th stuff and like Chucky and um, like Children of the Corn, Poltergeist. I, that stuff freaked freaked me out a lot. And so I'd watch them with my older cousins and then not be able to sleep, obviously. Um, Yeah, so, uh, and then as I got older, um, I like the more campy stuff. Um, You know, I'm pretty basic when it comes to horror, like knowledge and horror stuff. So I'm sure I can learn a lot more from the both of you. But I saw Ginger Snaps fairly recently, which so good. Love that movie. So good. And like coming of age together and like kind of becoming a monster, but like also embracing the monster. I don't know. I'm, that was, um, I loved it. And I, and this is like a little bit of a name drop, but I got to work with uh, Catherine Isabel on a show and she's fantastic. So I was like, ooh, I think if I watched it before I worked with her, I would have fangirled so bad. <laughs> like, I'd be like, ooh, hi. <laughs> she's like, she's something of a horror queen, I feel like. That's, you definitely learn a lot about horror from Catherine as well. Yeah, she's super vampy in real life, too. Just like, yeah. you know, cat-like and vampy. I'm like, ooh, I want to hang out with you more. She's really cool. Too cool. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, um, so something that's not, too spooky for anyone during the season is what's your like what's your essential Halloween candy what's the one you gotta have when it's Halloween oh uh, you know what I hated though when I grew like I, I can tell you what I hated is those caramel you know everyone does ever anyone like them you know the caramels with the with the uh Halloween wrappers I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. They're- Is it like the the little like wax wrapper type thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you like those? Those are terrible. I'm terrified of the dentist, so I will not eat anything that could potentially pull my teeth or fillings out. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a good call. I should probably do that myself. <laughs> I think I'm a little extreme about it, to be fair. Yeah? What 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 do you like to eat? So I think I'm in the minority on this because I know it's a big debate, but I'm obsessed with candy corn. I love candy corn. No, No. (laughs) I like how they look. I they're very pretty. You know, like in little like those little plastic baggies. Like there's, it's like it's like a nice gift that you don't want. (laughs) <laughs> candy corn is definitely the seasonal obsession, but if I had to pick the number one Halloween candy, it is obviously Reese's peanut butter cups. It doesn't That's really cool. get any better than that. I was going to say potentially Reese's as well. I also like, um, I like wonder bars. I don't know. And wonder bars. Yeah. What is a wonder bar? Why do I not know what that is? Do you not have that in the States? Maybe it's a Canadian thing. No, it's, I, I think we have them. Okay, well, I probably because they're chewy. So yeah, I'm just gonna uh, say it, they're right. not very I just friendly. Them out. Yeah, they're like, uh, you know, it's, um, they're chewy, so they got a little bit of the caramel. I think they've got some like peanut buttery stuff as well, and like some crunchy bits. I don't know, it's really good. I used to give it to people and be like, "You're wonderful." You know, <laughs> here's a Wonder Bar, so cheesy. Here, here's another uh, question that'll uh, come up later on in this Witching Hour episode. How, how would you rate your pumpkin carving skills? Are you any good at it? Um, I pretend that I'm good at it. No, I mean, every time we, I would do the, <laughs> every time we'd have those like contests, you know, the, the pumpkins that are barfing, 
You know, like, yes, that was my go-to. My go-to is like, yes, I'm going to win this by carving out the largest mouth, taking out the insides and like having it barf out. Like the more um, kind of like grossish or pukish or um, like that I could make um, a pumpkin that was, yeah, just, it's, it's never really delicate. You know how there are those pumpkins that are so beautiful. Like, I don't know. Uh, I, that I've seen on the streets at least um, with like the beautiful witches and um, obviously there's, uh, they took a lot of care to carve them out. And uh, that's not for me. I'm just like that, that, that square. I mean, triangle eyes, big mouth and it barfs there. Winner. <laughs> I feel I feel like we might all be on the same level here. Really? <laughs> I think so. I, think I so. like to do the fancy ones, but it takes so much time and like preparation. If I'm on the spot and I just have to carve a face, um, maybe not so good. Maybe not. How long? How long? How long would you sit there trying to carve these fancy pumpkins? Oh gosh, I'm so over the top. So we had a Halloween party like two years ago where I wanted to do a pumpkin display. I think I spent, it wasn't one pumpkin, but I carved like 10 different pumpkins. I think I was there for like four or five hours, like way over the top Halloween nerds. Wow. Yeah, but four or five hours is pretty good for, let's, let's like half an hour per pumpkin. That's I, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm also cheating a little bit because I'm not counting the time I spent like the day before pre-poking the outline of where I was going to carve. I'll say this. Cheater. Stretch your wrists. It's a lot. <laughs> if you're going in for the detailed ones. Yeah. yeah like carpal tunnel syndrome or yeah, something. Exactly. <laughs> How did you get your carpal home. tunnel oh, from car carving too many fancy pumpkins? <laughs> it's a way better story than sitting on the computer. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Way better. All right. Let's get into Why the Last Man, because the show is excellent and you are something else in it. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Yeah. I wanted to start with the very beginning of your casting process, because Olivia Thurlby was on one of our shows and she was explaining that like it was a bit of a, of a quick whirlwind where she was cast and then all of a sudden she was up there shooting. So was it the same thing for you? Did you score the role and then immediately get whisked off to start filming? Um, no, my, my story is a little bit different. Um, basically, I, uh, I put the role on tape. Uh, I got a call back. I flew myself down to L.A. Um, you know, took that risk and then uh, ended up getting the part. Uh, but because my character um, shows up kind of halfway through the season, so I was at home. Uh, I was about to go to uh, Toronto to go just meet everyone um, at the very beginning, but then obviously the pandemic hit. Um, yeah. So that was that. So I did, I did a lot of waiting around at home, but I will say, so Eli uh, Clark, who's a showrunner, she is honestly the most wonderful. I, I'm sure Olivia just went into how awesome she is and how like we joke that she's like so pathologically inclusive and she is so just thoughtful and like, I felt so respected and heard being a part of that show and she it's because she was at the helm. So um, with her at the helm, she kind of organized these like Zoom meetups. So we'd meet up like, uh, I don't know, um, once every few weeks just online and we'd just hang for like an hour and just chat. And that was really cool. So I, I did feel like I was a part of the team even though I didn't show up until like, way like months and months later uh yeah so it's um yeah it was it was a lot of sitting around but I I still felt like I was a part of the process so that was nice that is such a nice uh part of it to have so you were involved like before the pandemic started okay okay <laughs> It's it's interesting to hear the stories about how, you know, like the show was ready to go before the pandemic and then everything came to a screeching halt and something's changed. And I think it was late 2020. And then or did I just fast forward a bit? No, it was late 2020. Wow. When what? 
when uh, additional people started to get brought into the ensemble. And then immediately after that, it was jumping into shooting. Wow, I I don't think I actually computed how quickly you guys did that and then shot the show and then it came out for us. It was the quickest turnaround ever. We're like, uh, (laughs) um, uh, Eli shared a lot some of the episodes with us before, and we're like, we just shot this a month ago. <laughs> it was it was a little bit weird. That's so something cool. else. Had you guys already completed filming then by the time it premiered, or were you still wrapping up? No, by the time it premiered, we were done. We stopped. We we were finished by mid July, I think, and then, um, yeah, it premiered mid September. Pretty fast for a whole season of television. Yeah, it was really fast. I mean, they shot the pilot the year before. Um, yeah, end of 2020. So I guess, I don't know, maybe, uh, I don't know. We were ready to go, but like early 2020. So maybe they were just like chomping at the bit. They're like, hey, let's get this out. Yeah. So... This is obviously based on source material that many out there absolutely adore. So when you jump into a role like this, how do you find the balance between respecting that source material and the character that fans already know and love, but then adding your, adding your own bits to it and making her your own for this show? Yeah. Um, you know, I hadn't read the source material until I auditioned for it. And then, um, when I got the role, obviously I finished it. Uh, and so I wanted to add like bits of her, like sort of her essence. Um, and you know, some of that, like kind of prickly kind of cantankerous side is, uh, you kind of see in the comics. Uh, but when I talked to, um, Eli, uh, she kind of wanted to go past the sort of typical scientist trope and really, uh, flesh Allison out, you know, she's, not just some like person kind of an unfeeling sort of person who comes in and you know says her sciencey jargon and then leaves she is you know a full human she's passionate she's charismatic she is you know full of energy she's got like she's complex she's controversial i think there's so much to allison that um, we have yet to learn. I'm, you know, I'd be so excited to kind of dig even deeper into her sort of backstory and like what has, um, like what she's been through and, uh, yeah. And sort of how her relationships kind of continue with both 355 and Yorick. So that'll be really exciting. Um, yeah, I, I just want to make Allison, uh, like, yeah, again, a three-dimensional character. That's that's what that's my hope, um, and I think with Eli at the helm, uh, that's not going to be a problem. <laughs> you are very very successful in what you just described. I feel I'm I mean it honestly. I feel like everything you just described is what I saw and felt while watching it, and I love the dynamic between the three of them. Oh yay! Thank you. Was there anything uh, specific uh, that you took away from those conversations with Eli that was like, um, that felt either or different to the source material or framed things in a new way that really helped you um, come to set like with a firm grasp on this take of the character? Um, I think it's like learning as I go. I think because the, um, you know, there's this cataclysmic event that happens. And I think in that, you know, you do sort of lose a sense of yourself and you question, who am I? You know, it's like what identities stay, what identities go. And I think for me, I was just like trying to go go, um, on the ride and kind of discover Allison as I, you know, as I went through each episode. And so I was open to kind of discovering um, different sides of her which you'll see more of in uh, the last couple of episodes, which, you know, please watch because it, it, it ramps up quite a bit and it gets, it's really exciting. I don't know. Uh, I don't know when you're releasing this, but episode eight is out right now. And episode eight is, I, when I read that 
script. I was just like, ah, oh, I cannot wait to see this. And when I actually saw it, I was so pumped at the end. I, I don't even know. I was like, I need to watch episodes nine and 10 right now. I'm like bursting right now wanting to talk about them. I might have watched them last night and they are something else. Yes. I need more. I know. You watched all? Um, did you I watch? Watched, I watched the whole season. You got the whole season. <gasps> oh. I've been blabbing to Haley as I've been cruising through and I keep saying how much I love it and the way you guys just stuck the landing and teed up some things that I need to see more of. It's just more people need to watch this show. Please oh, listen. More. Please yes. listen and watch. Um, let's highlight Ben and Ashley a little because, again, your dynamic is one of my favorite qualities of the show. So let's get nice and convoluted with this. With your collaboration process, what is something that all three of you like to do that made that collaboration easy and seamless? And then what's something unique that each of you brought to that process? Um, so what's surprising is that we actually didn't have a chemistry read before we got the part. Uh, it just sort of, I think it's in the writing, you know, and I think it's also Eli's vision. She was uh, probably there in all of the audition rooms, like during the, um, she was there when I did my callback and I'm sure she met with obviously Ashley and Ben. Uh, so honestly, a lot of it's in the writing. Um, and for us, I think we got together once before um, we actually shot the first scene that I appear in just so that we could get the rhythm and the timing. Cause that's, you know, a part of it too, like that sort of, um, the quick back banter back and forth. Um, yeah, I think we just found our way. I think for me, when I first showed up, I was just like, cause I was chomping at the bit, right? I was like waiting and I came and I was like, Bleh! and I just was like running around. I think all that pent up energy. I mean, same with Allison. I was, and I think for probably Ben and Ashley, they're like, Oh, okay. But it worked for 355 and York. They're like, who is this lady just, you know, wielding a knife and ooh, screaming at us? Um, yeah, I think, I don't know what it, I can't point to a specific thing that we did. I just think it happened. Like sometimes the chemistry is there and sometimes it isn't. And for us, luckily it was there <laughs> I think we all just really dove deep into our characters you know and um really thought about sort of like the relationships I think what in terms of um a good trio I think um we're <sighs> I think what's important is that we're able to cycle through different archetypes as well. You know, sometimes I'm like a sister, sometimes I'm like the wife, sometimes I'm the mother, so, you know, and I think you can see that with the trio, like we cycle through kind of archetypes and relationships as like, depending on the situation and the context. And I think that's really important. Um, and I just think we're very, yeah, we're just distinct. Uh, the characters are just distinct. So yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's Eli and the casting. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll. That's what I. That's where I'll put the. Um, I'll chalk it up to in terms of the chemistry. <laughs> totally makes sense. I hear you. Yeah, <laughs> Diana, thank you so much for joining us, and happy Halloween to you. Happy Halloween! Thank you, and again, congrats on crushing the costume game today. Thank oh, yeah. you. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Welcome back to the studio where we are about to carve some pumpkins. Vampire themed pumpkins, if, if we can accomplish it. I'm gonna be lucky if I could carve like the simplest face imaginable into this pumpkin right now. You're gonna do great. No, what is that? How are you even doing that? I'm not doing that. Like that. Use a little knife and you cut this stuff off. Wait. So when you put your, you know, candles or whatnot. Take my rings off. It doesn't burn. <laughs> you can cook all these seeds into a tasty treat. <laughs> We're gonna nail this. <laughs> and I haven't tried this yet, but it was like, 
before getting the pumpkin guts out? I don't know. This seems like it's a lie. I'm not getting any traction here <laughs> whatsoever. Oh, it's so like stringy in here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I feel like I've got this feels like the easier part to me. It's like the, the actual carving that I'm gonna have a hard time with. I'm gonna do that. Don't have way more faith in me than I do. It's a very low stakes enterprise fair. I feel oh. like I should just use my hands. I often do. My god, I'm just gonna get in there. Grab it. Hey, you know, so you try this things. little guy. I haven't had what is that? It's supposed to help you get all these. Looks like out. a cooking tool, and you know I don't know how to use those. <laughs> Does it have to be like completely clean? We really should have gotten paper towels. <laughs> Next Halloween, we're prepping pumpkins, and we are buying paper towels. Do I have to get all the stringy bits out too, or just I the seeds? Is that the goal? Ideally, you want to get as many of the long ones out, so when you put a candle in it, they don't catch on fire. <laughs> but for this, work. I'll work a little harder then. <laughs> <laughs> this is like not easy. No, and the other thing, <laughs> it takes me a really long time to carve a pumpkin up to my liking. Because the other thing is if you start cutting out faces and you have all these stringies on there, they're going to kind of show through whatever you cut out. I, like, I've got a ton of stringies in here. I feel like these, these are not the freshest you, pumpkins, I'm going to be honest. Is that, is that why the stringies They're not happen? very goopy. They're stringier than goopy. I, I feel ashamed that I've spent all this time in the garden and I don't know how to pick a fresh pumpkin. <laughs> I've never hung them. You still probably would have done a way better job than I would. Raping the f***ing game. Ripping the curse. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> you pumpkin f***. <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't know what else. Pennywise, you're such a problem <laughs> child. It's my fault. My no, fault. I'm I'm been going over table. all day. Typical Funko Pop. <laughs> Is it a dumb idea to try to use the knife to cut some of the stringies off? No, it's not. Ew. <laughs> it's just, it's just a plant. Wait, we got bunk pumpkins, <laughs> man. We're legit gonna be here all day if I cut all these stringies <laughs> off. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get that focused. So what part are you up to? You're still emptying your pumpkin. I am. When I you, am. when you start the next phase, I'll stop with the stringies. I'm, my main thing is I want to get all my seeds out, and I'm not quite there yet. Like, do you legit have to get every seed out? I mean, I try to, but that's because I like to make them into a tasty treat. All right. But, so, like, nothing bad happens. Treats. You don't get a curse on your house if you, I don't, you don't. Well, you told me that the string you set things on fire, so I don't want, like, well, the seeds I mean, not to do like, that, too. They just look bad and smell bad. It's not, like, a danger. My I don't, pumpkin don't, is don't going to the reek. <laughs> I am not a fire safety professional. I can either confirm or deny if the stringies are important. This were a mistake. Oh no, Chucky, no. <laughs> oh, look at that. Progress, yeah. progress made. There's still so many left though. <laughs> like literally yeah. the entire video. We're, we're gonna have to ask the editor to do some work here. <laughs> so are you just gonna like freehand this? Well you can. I think these little cla clowns. Crayons are to like help you sketch out what you want. <laughs> I guarantee you I forget to carve that part out and I just wind up hacking up the triangles. What do I do with the mouth? It's not gonna be impossible for me. Yeah, give him a cookie too. Give him like a vampire cheese. That's it. I feel like this drawing is crap, but it's gonna look way better it's than the finished It's gonna look so good. Product. It's gonna look better than mine. I take like pumpkin carving too seriously, so without like is, my proper tools, this is gonna be a disaster. Is this the tool to use to cut it, or is there a oh, simpler no. tool on this no, 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 table? No. It feels like this thing is gonna break. It's just good television, Barry. Which was the detail one? The little, like the little guy? Littlest guy? Little is that this one? one? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Let me just see if I can make it go in a circle. Look, I did it! And I gave him like 
You did awesome. There's like a lot of strength in there, but. I think you're treating this like a competitive sport. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really just the thing you do for fun. <laughs> Wait, oh. Okay. I'm like not following the lines anymore. <laughs> Carve your own path. Never colored in the lines as a kid I did. Oh, pretty good. I feel like we're gonna have to turn out the lights to get the full effect after. Yeah. But isn't that always true? <laughs> I meant specifically of pumpkins, but I guess it sounded <laughs> I like I was talking say, about life. <laughs> you put me down like a rabbit hole of thought with that comment. <laughs> These are not the sturdiest knives. They are not, that is true. They're for children. Really? Because I still feel very dangerous holding it. <laughs> children under parental supervision. You're my supervision right now. Make sure I don't do anything stupid. Oh, I'm the wrong person. I love stupid stuff. Look at that, it's happening. Biggest lesson I've learned right That's now. That's a really valuable lesson for everyone at home. Buy paper towels first. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? It's just, it's <laughs> not working. The mouth is not working. All right, I'm gonna rethink the mouth. Where's your little like spinny mixer thing? Spinny mixer thing. Okay. And you do. Oh God, I like don't even have the hand power to turn this. What are you doing with it? Like using clear the guts. I, again, I'm not convinced it's hyper effective. I don't think that's helping me. I, I think it's a more more of a me problem though. Like I just can't. I'm not out sure of about that. Oh, look! It's like it just puked. Yep. There's so much period. <laughs> I feel like I'm so close. Like it's, it's not that bad. Oh, it's, there. it's just very messy. We need to clean up before too. I'm so sorry. I will pick all of that up. Hey Matt, can I ask you one other favor? Can you grab my watch and my rings and take them off the table? They're right here. I really underestimated how messy this was. I was Yours looks like a bat. I was really stunned to see we were doing it here on the recording table, I'm gonna be honest. I brought like a whole bunch of t like um, things to lay out on the floor because it's so messy. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> All right. He lost his top time. teeth in a vampire tribunal, according to um, True Blood rules. <laughs> okay, I'd believe it. Oh, it's like... So, do you snap the glowy sticks and then put it in the pumpkin? You do. <laughs> so, <laughs> wipe my hands on my outfit. Look at this! This is nonsense of Halloween colors. Nonsense. I feel like it'll look good when we turn out the lights. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm telling myself. Do you need to wipe your hands? Oh, thank you. Oh, so close. So crack this and just stick it in? Yeah, I mean, let's see how that works. Got some wild, wild tops. 
<laughs> you don't look bad. So you want to you want us to snap? Yeah, give me. That looks really good. Cool. I'm so proud of us. Go team. Spooky stuff. Whoa. Look at that classic gentle, gentle jack o' lantern <laughs> with a with a little vampire twist. Yeah. Look My, at that bat. Look at look at this absurdist <laughs> art representation of a pumpkin. Cheers with pumpkin guts. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Cheers. Cheers. Don't drink that. Don't. <laughs> Look, I clean this whole set with a snap of my fingers and with Haley's witch fingers. That's the power we have together. It's magic. It's magic during spooky season. And with that, I think that brings us to the end of this edition of The Witching Hour. Thank you so much to Diana and to our wonderful guests for swinging by and telling us about some of their favorite vampire movies and showing off their super cool costumes. It was great. And thank you to FX's What We Do in the Shadows for sponsoring this spooky Halloween episode. And be sure to catch all the episodes of season three, now streaming on FX on Hulu. And be sure to keep an eye out for season four, which is in production now. And you can learn more at fxnetworks.com and on social at The Shadows FX. And with that, we are out of here. Happy Halloween, everybody. You have officially survived the witching hour.